Aeon unit. About two years old, if that. Getting ready to change the bearings and yet another motor. These ball door motors, I don't know, man. <laughs> Might have a little issue with quality control on these batches. There you have the blower. Speaking of being better than a Goodman, uh, the design in general on Aeon units is just top notch and just completely out of the league, out of anything Goodman has ever offered or even thought to offer. So, you know, from simple little things like, uh, you know, restraints and isolation dampers for the copper line every couple of feet, you know, so they don't rub and hold in place. This motor is made to come out by uh, taking a couple bolts out and lift this whole cradle out. They wrap up extra length of wire and just secure it here. See, I just have to take this out, and I'm going to have, like, I don't know, six, seven, ten feet of wire so I can take this thing out of the unit. And, of course, that's normally hidden behind that panel right there. So you can see with just the uh, motor coasting from the backdraft, you can hear those bearings they sound pretty cool. Uh, I have replaced uh, bearings in, like, three of these Aeon units on this site. Uh, smaller Aeons for the fresh air. This is uh, critical air for server rooms, so I think it's uh, a bigger unit. Oh, this was heavy. Um, the other Aeon units over there that I'd done before had one horse motors. These are five horsepower motors, so it's like lifting out a compressor plus that freaking blower wheel uh, out of that cavity. I took a little bit of strength. So I got the first bell end off in the uh, bearing cap, this bearing shot. Something interesting I want to show you here. This motor has quote unquote greasable bearings as the grease zerk there on the top, which goes down through a channel, which then will pump grease into this cavity, which you've seen happen when I've greased these before. And it's supposed to fill the bearings with grease. So, on the new bearings, you know, they usually just stock these and they just say pop these out on the one side. That way it will pump the grease into them. And that's how you want them. But uh, the OEM bearings, <laughs> no, they just, they have the covers still on them. So, right there you can probably see where all the grease has been deadheading against it. I mean, I guess with the heat and there's kind of like some little weep holes on the outer edge maybe when it liquefies it still gets in there i don't know but i don't know the people that sell the bearings they say to pop those covers out so i guess i'm kind of just taking their word for it maybe somebody else will say that's a bad thing to do for some certain reason but i don't know it's definitely gonna fill the whole cavity with grease <laughs> and get into the bearings a lot better so that's what i do and you have to say you know these bearings only went like a year before they started making noise because uh, pretty much even the units that aren't to the point where I said you must change the bearings, like this one behind me, the motor's already somewhat noisy. I can hear it a little bit. So the bearings suck. Maybe it's just the fact they didn't take the covers off, I don't know, but the bearings I've replaced so far over the last year or two at this facility, I've put them in like that, and they're still working just fine. So... Yeah, I just put that heavy bastard back in there. It's like lifting a compressor into that compartment. Five horsepower motor. So the only sound you hear right now is I just turn on the power and it's booting up and it's uh, the stepper motors for the uh, reheat, whatever. It's all resyncing there. Okay, the motor is just uh, spinning from the back draft and it is perfectly quiet now. And in a second it should energize the VFD fire that sucker up. There we go. Action.
sounds perfectly normal now, and it, once again, is definitely quieter than we could have.